Okay, dear students, let us see what is there in this question. Two wave generators placed at the position P and Q produce water waves with wavelength of 4 cm. Each generator operating alone will produce a wave oscillating with an amplitude of 3 at the position R. Anyways, so at R, the amplitude is 3 for both of the waves. Now, PR is 42 and RQ is 60 cm. Both wave generators now operate together in phase so completely same waves are getting produced and they are in synchro with each other what is the amplitude of the resulting wave at r so we have to find the amplitude at r how are we going to do this four is four centimeter is the wavelength now if four centimeter is the wavelength you see this is 42 and this is 60 so we will just divide it first of all like let us see if 42 is like there is an integer there that cancel this thing out well I don't think there is because it is 21 so it's like 21 is not divisible by 2 so it is like uh, 10.5 what does this mean this means that for this 10 wavelengths will be completed like this and here the half wavelength will be completed and as per this is concerned let us see 60 divided by 4 so it would be 30 and it's coming out to be 15 yes so from Q, 15 number of complete wavelengths will be there and this will be the last wavelength that will reach R. So now it's clear that from Q, the wavelengths are completed and from P, half of the wavelength is completed. So it becomes a clear cut case of destructive interference. But how can we explain it mathematically like what is happening here? So what is given in as a principle in our book is it books is that we first of all find what is the path difference so the path difference should be equal to the integral multiple of the wavelength lambda the path difference should be equal to the integral multiple of wavelength lambda if it is a destructive interference if it is constructive interference otherwise it will be destructive we will write the condition for that also for destructive interference it was n minus half into lambda my dear students, uh, I know that in data booklet for the interference, for the destructive interference, the formula given is n plus half. But I take it as minus half because there is a discrepancy. I have discussed this many times in the next topic. Please try to see the playlist there. So I'm going to use this. Now, let us see what is the path difference. So path difference is 60 minus 42, which comes out to be 18 centimeters. And when we divide it by the wavelength that is 4 so obviously it is not the integral part but if we are talking about the destructive interference so n minus half into wavelength lambda is equal to 18 so this is 4 you can say so this 4 can be taken here and this will become 2n minus 1 divided by 2 18 divided by 4 just cancelling it out 9 this 2 and 2 gets cancelled out so 2n is equal to 10 and n is equal to 5 to c. We are literally talking about the fifth uh, uh, dark fringe if it was a clear cut case of interference. Although I will not say that this is a proper interference. No, this is not a proper interference. We cannot call it interference. But yes, now we know that yes, they are interfering destructively. There is no doubt about it. Okay, so it means that whatever happens here, like one wave is now going to go up, the other wave is now going to go down. So at R, there is no sound reaching. It means it is always having a destructive interference, always. Hence, the answer is going to be zero because the amplitude is three for both of the waves. You just try to imagine this. It's so ironic. You see, there is a speaker here at P and there is a speaker, another speaker at Q. Both of them are giving you the same sound and you are standing in between them. But if this condition is fulfilled, you are standing between two speakers even then you are not listening to any sound. You are not listening to any sound because they are intentionally creating destructive interference there. And hence the sound is zero. This is what is happening here. Like you can, you call it, um, it, is, it is good for transverse wave also, it is good for longitudinal waves also. So this is how we do this question, my dear students. If there is any other code doubt, do let me know in the comment section. Let us verify the answer from the mark scheme. And yes, the answer is D indeed. This is Professor Varun. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel. All the best. Bye.